we have an opportunity in 2024 to create deep tech project with 3D deep learning. But I think it will make it easier if we break down the process to learn 3D deep learning and how to get started and how to find the right pathway, the right track that best fits your goals. The first stage is basically identifying why we should learn 3D deep learning. What is the impact of 3D deep learning? And here I selected four main elements. The first one is in medical and healthcare. You know, whenever you, you go now to um, the hospital for some reasons, if you need to make a scan, there are some specific scans which are called MRI, which would basically make slices of your brain, slices of your body, and this is then processed with 3D workflows. And having the ability to inject 3D deep learning there means that you may be able to develop some kind of higher accuracy detecting algorithm that will spot say cancer early on or, th or help like the doctor make a better prediction about the health status or the health diagnosis of a patient, which is very significant. Another track which should be the second element will be, for example, if you want to speed up a bit gaming and uh, entertainment industry, you can generate 3D assets that can be used in this environment in a very efficient way. And you can streamline that to have a full pipeline end-to-end, -end, which will just take a text prompt, for example, as an input and spit out your 3D assets that you can inject directly inside of your environment. Another thing that is very cool is for mapping or geospatial professionals. With 3D deep learning, you can speed up various steps that lead to digital twin creation, for example, or 3D reconstruction at large. And here there is also a lot, a lot, a lot of opportunities in this area. And finally, one thing that I would also recommend checking out is if you are really passionate about robotics or uh, autonomous driving system, definitely making that a reality will fall back to learning 3D deep learning at some point because there will be some specific elements that you need to adjust within this architecture that will leverage 3D deep learning. So that will be the first thing why I think it's important to learn 3D deep learning. Now that you kind of grasp where you want to go or what you want to address first, it's time to understand what is the foundational knowledge. The good news is you do not need to spend 10,000 hours. You can cut down the time to only the essential to try early on your ID. And the essential here are on three main pillars, mathematics, artificial intelligence, and 3D data expertise. In mathematics, basically, you want to make sure that you perfectly grasp geometry, 3D projections, okay, or reprojection, and trigonometry. Grasping that basically is enough at this stage. Then we'll move on to uh, artificial intelligence and computer science. Here it's good if you have an idea about what is a neural network, what is a convolutional neural network, and also what is a recurrent neural network. Extended from that, for example, having an idea about transformers, an idea about uh, machine learning and the concept around it will definitely help, but from the get-go it's not, it's, it's not really uh, necessary. And then finally, when we talk about 3D data expertise, there are two things that would be very good to have as a foundational layer is 3D data representation. How do you represent 3D data at large and 3D point cloud processing? Because this kind of data is canonical and you can attach other ways of representing data directly to it, which is phenomenal, right? So once you have that foundational block, you are ready to start onto the third stage, which I will call learn top tier architectures. Okay, so the best way there to, to approach this specific aspect of 3D deep learning is by actually implementing solution. But that will take time and that means that you need some coding knowledge, some Python knowledge at this stage, which is not mandatory for all pathways. So if you do not want to go there, it's at least important to grasp an architecture, to know how to read an architecture. And here I selected three main ones for you. 
The first one is PointNet. PointNet is one of the first one that was able to process point cloud as unstructured data directly. The second one is KPConf, which is very interesting to understand how you can do convolutional with convolutional kernel on top of unstructured data as well. So creating a top of a kind of a structured data approach on an unstructured data set. And the final one for point cloud will be grow SP, which is an unsupervised method which I like particularly because it resonates with my thinking um, of having the guest art theory which groups sets of elements and reasoning them from this group of visual cues instead of going down at the point level, right? So super point. And then you can extend that to uh, VoxNet to uh, ShapeNet or Pixar, for example, which are all the architecture that will uh, show you how you handle all the uh, modalities as well. So that will be my recommendation as far as architecture understanding goes. Then we can move on to the fourth pillar, which will be practical workflow application. It's very important to understand the wide applications and within this wide application what are the specific pinpoints in the workflow that deep learning can touch on or 3d deep learning can touch on the first one is 3d reconstruction 3d deep learning definitely has its card to play on 3d reconstruction workflow the most basic one being going from a 2d image to a 3d point clouds or 3d model and you will see some application for example only extracting depth information from a single point of view using deep learning. The second step there will be registration. So registration, making sure to understand that you want to bring into one specific frame of reference various perspectives. And here you have two like different approach. The, the first one will be uh, having the same platform right and the same sensor and the second approach will be multi-sensor registration which is something else and also complicated and also where 3d deep learning will play a huge part then my favorite one is segmentation and in segmentation so having the ability to detect groups of element or semantics you have three main categories you have semantic segmentation right for each point of interest, each triangle, so each entity of interest, you add a label, semantic segmentation. You have instant segmentation, where you add a label plus an information about how many objects per label you have. So this is the chair number one, this is the chair number two, and so on. And then you have the part segmentation, so being able to like refine an initial object into part constituents. After that, you have the fourth, let's say, uh, workflow modules, which will be classification or 3D object detection. Classification, which you take on one full object and you predict what it is, or 3D object detection, being able to extract 3D bounding boxes from your full point cloud. And then finally, I group three in one, right, which is uh, tracking, compression or completion which will be very interesting for a lot of application as well. So that's all the practical workflow application that you should have in mind and where you can definitely inject some kind of modular solution. And finally, once all of that is very clear and you all have all the ins and outs, we can go onto my roadmap recommendation and choosing where you fall onto three different paths. first path, I call that the hobbyist. Basically, that's where you do not want to dive very, very deep inside of the intricacies of 3D deep learning. You just want to be a user. So you don't necessarily need to code. And here to get started there, to make sure that, yeah, definitely that's what I want to become an expert in. What you need to do is this project. You create a 3D it's a model out of a generation pipeline using, for example, Luma AI, and you will see how fun it is. The second path is what I call the engineer. And here, the goal is to actually create a system that works and that solves a solution. And the engineer project will be to automate 3D reconstruction. So you know that it works. How can I make sure that 
someone that drops something in will get the assets that he wants, right? So that's automating this process. That will be the project for you. And the, the final, the if you want to go really deep and be at the forefront of this technology and like pushing the boundaries of what we make with it, it's going onto the researcher path. And the researcher path, basically, the project will be to create a 3D RCNN, right, for semantic segmentation tasks. And that will also give you a very good idea about, is it something that you like? Is it something that you're passionate about? Once all of this is framed, you accomplish your project, I think it will be good to lay low, to either push your little venture and create a product out of it, or to just lay onto a piece of land that you, you acquired, you grow some vegetables, you create wine, and then that's your secret to uh, unlocking freedom, right? So joke away, if you want to deep dive there, I have a course which is the 3D deep learning course, where with Jean-Jacques, we spent uh, three years of R&D in it, right, full time. So definitely check it out if you want to speed up your growth. In the meantime, I will continue pushing out open content. If you like that, if you like these tutorials, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that will help the algorithm and comment on what you would like to see next. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye-bye.